What's happened to Hush Puppy? Raymond Abbas, also known as Hush Puppy, Hush, Ray Hush Puppy, and the billionaire Gucci Blazo, is a Nigerian man and social media superstar who faced an international manhunt and criminal charges in the United States for conspiracy to launder money obtained from business email compromise fraud and other scams. We'll call him Hush Puppy during the rest of this review. The criminal charges will come to in due course, but let's take a look at the man and how he came to be so famous or infamous. Hush Puppy was one of the first megastars on Instagram who garnered millions of followers as he posted pictures and videos of his lavish spending on exotic cars, watches, bags from expensive brands like Gucci, Fendi and Louis Vuitton and of himself boarding helicopters with celebrities, footballers and Nigerian politicians all while on charter jets. One of his common claims was that of being a real estate developer. Origins. Where did all this begin? It started in 1982 in Awaran Shoki, Nigeria, where he grew up. His later life began with an email. There was a community of young boys back then who came to be known as the Yahoo Boys, local slang for cybercriminal which was based on the free Yahoo emails that became available when he was young. Hush Puppy was one of the smarter Yahoos and learned the skills of cybercrime very quickly. He moved to Malaysia partly because Nigeria had a bad reputation for cybercrime from the 419 Nigerian print scams of the 70s and 80s, which presumably made it difficult to operate, but also because it was perceived that the Malaysian legal framework was a bit more lax. The scam where it's believed he earned most of his money was that of Business Email Compromise, or BEC for short. The way this works is that the fraudsters compromise a business email address. This could be achieved for example through social engineering or direct hacking into the company's servers. The key to the email is that it needs to be one that regularly involves financial transactions. This will typically therefore be from someone in the finance or the accounting department. They will monitor the email and watch the invoices and payments flow in and out. The moment they see the right invoice they have a number of options. The simplest is to spoof the invoice and either change the bank account on it or send an email saying that there is a new bank account and providing alternative account details. The accounting department in a lot of cases just sends the money out, unless they are diligent with their internal controls, checks and balances. This for Hush Puppy was particularly successful and as his success grew, he started posting on social media. His posts were a sort of mantra on self-belief and prosperity and his followers started to grow. After this success, he moved to Dubai and the level of wealth and opulence he was immersed in took another big step up. His own personal spending escalated as well. He had a penthouse apartment, designer clothes and a garage with top-end cars like Bentleys and Ferraris. Profile in his native Nigeria. He is particularly notorious in Nigeria and negativity comes from a couple of sources. He obviously had the reputation of being a Yahoo boy, which was quite an insult there. Also, we saw a 2017 song, Teleperson, by Nigerian singer Timaya, and this included a couple of people with whom Hush Puppy had a high profile feud and contained lyrics directed towards Hush Puppy. These indirectly accuse him of being a swindler and lavishing his money on designer clothes instead of investing in profitable ventures and warning him that he would soon be caught by the authorities. <laughs> how it all unraveled. Unfortunately for him, all his high profile lifestyle hadn't gone unnoticed. Where was he getting all his wealth from? The authorities were paying him attention. 
It started to unwind with the arrest of a small-time Canadian money launderer by the FBI. This man's name is Galab Amalari. When arrested, he had a phone on him. And guess whose contact details they found on the phone? Yes, Hush Puppies. After investigation, it transpired that Hush Puppy was part of a loose consortium of hackers from around the world that laundered money from BEC hacks from bank to bank and country to country. In fact, one of the group of people who were prominently involved in obtaining the business emails for the consortium to abuse turned out to be North Korean state-sponsored hackers. Billions of dollars of stolen money was traced to this group. Then came the metaphorical knock on the door on a warm night in June 2020, or in this case, a crash into Hush Puppy's apartment in the early hours by the Dubai SWAT team armed to the teeth. Arrest. He was arrested by the Dubai police and in an operation named Fox Hunt 2, six simultaneous raids took place including at his apartment at the Palazzo Versace. Another 11 people were arrested and in total over 150 million dirhams, which is about 40 million dollars in USD, in cash was seized together with 13 luxury cars worth 25 million dirhams, that's about 7 million dollars, 21 laptops, 47 smartphones, 15 memory storage devices, 5 external hard drives and 800,000 emails of potential victims. Within 24 hours he had been put on a plane and sent to the US. Amongst the allegations against him are schemes that defrauded a US law firm of about 40 million dollars, illegally transferred monies of $14.7 million from a foreign financial institution and a plan to steal $124 million from an English football club. He was also likely involved in the attack on Malta's Malta's Bank of Valletta in February 2019, which transferred millions of dollars through bogus accounts. This attack was of such seriousness in Malta that the then Prime Minister Joseph Muscat was forced to address its parliament. The authorities Authorities also accused him of aiding North Korean hackers in money laundering. The indictment against him includes conspiracy to engage in money laundering and wire frauds in various countries. He is actually still wanted in Nigeria by Nigeria's own financial crime police. Alluding to his popularity, his request for bail was turned down despite his lawyers arguing he is a celebrity. He would not want to ruin his credibility and status rather than stay here and face these allegations. Outcome. On the 28th of July 2021, Hush Puppy pleaded guilty to money laundering and in doing so also pointed to a Deputy Commissioner of Police in Nigeria, Abba Kiari, as an accomplice in a specific $1.1 million scam deal. The following day, a US court granted FBI warrants to arrest Abba Kiari. A plea deal that he entered in two states that he risks 20 years imprisonment, a three-year period of supervised release, and a fine of $500,000 or twice the gross gain or gross loss resulting from the offence. At the time of producing this video in June 2022, his sentencing is still a few months away, which indicates he's probably still assisting the police with their inquiries. Conclusion so what's become of the Instagram superstar? Even though he's generally regarded poorly in Nigeria, he is still by some considered the ultimate Yahoo boy and a hero. As we heard, he is still wanted in Nigeria for fraud and will likely spend the greater part of the next three decades in jail. It does beg the question, why did he draw all this attention to himself on social media? Well, to be honest, it is probably a mundane answer and the same reason that everybody else does simply to get a reaction. His lavish lifestyle obviously made him stand out. It would appear that while Hush Puppy was a high profile arrest, unfortunately he is only one of many people around the world involved in these BEC frauds. North Koreans, Russians and many other countries have all been implicated in harboring organised groups of people perpetuating the fraud.
the law enforcement fight will clearly continue. I hope you liked this slightly shorter video, it would be a great help if you could hit the subscribe button and please leave any comments in the notes below, I do read them all. Bye for now.